Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So I got a lot of tips on board this week and they're all for cool season lawns, middle of summer, over by Salt Lake City, and now on here into Bozeman. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm at a golf course. That's actually our hole over there, Yard Mastery is sponsoring. Let me tell you a little bit more about that and the nonprofit that we're here supporting today. So I'm out here at the Black Bull Golf Course. This is in Bozeman, Montana. I'm here because my company Yard Mastery is a sponsor of the golf tournament for these guys, Big Sky Bravery. They're a nonprofit that works with special forces operators that are kind of transitioning out of active duty and into back into society. They get them out work with them, you know, just help them with their transition. And we're a very proud sponsor of them. And so we're sponsoring a whole lot here, having a great time. Now, earlier in the week, I was in Salt Lake City, got to meet up with some of my YouTube buddies. We did a little top golf over by there, kept it under 10 people in a congregation, just wanted to say. But then while I was there, I've, I always do my hotel walk and talks and I check out different things that I find in the lawn. And I found some Poa annua, annual bluegrass, which is one of those things that I hear about all the time. So I'm in Salt Lake and you guys know that whenever I'm in Salt Lake I like to do reviews of local lawns and I'm here at a place called the Grand America Hotel and wow what a beautiful lawn they have and there's a few things I'm noticing here I mean just look at how gorgeous that is overall right and you got to realize this is a public place so to be this beautiful and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how this Kentucky bluegrass is holding up here because it's 90 degrees today it's been topping out at 92 93 in this area and you can see I mean Look at how beautiful that is. But before we do that, I wanna show you that this lawn is loaded with Poa annua, whole bunch of it all throughout. And uh, it's just now going to seed. So you can see the spots all in through here. See how the seeds are kinda one here, one there. I don't know what they call that, opposite. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, if you're looking at regular seed grass going to seed or bluegrass going to seed, the seeds are more compact and more upright. These are more out and kind of opposite like that. You can see there's a whole lot of it in here. So I've been talking a lot lately in the podcast about annual bluegrass. And you know, when you have a problem like they have here, I mean, this is some, sometimes this will die off, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll stay green for a lot longer, but for sure, what you need to do in the fall is no more aeration, no more overseed for you. You need to go to a straight pre-emergent strategy in the fall and try to start getting on top of this Poa annua. Because if you continue to aerate and overseed in the, in the fall, all that you're doing is you're just, all that fur you're putting down and all that extra water and everything else, you're just encouraging the Poa annua seeds that get dropped, I just showed you, it's all going to seed. You're just encouraging those to grow even faster and grow right up alongside your Kentucky bluegrass. So you go to a pre-emergent strategy in the fall for sure. And like I said, it's really evident here, you know, right there, all through here. You know, this has been a problem for a while. Now here's a section here that looks like it must've been redone or something at another point because it's got a slightly darker color, even though there's a lot of poa in there that you might just be seeing overall. It's got a slightly darker color, but doesn't have the poa annua problem. It's that beautiful, soft Kentucky bluegrass. So the other thing I did want to mention though is, is this lawn I mean, other than the Poa annua, and I'm sure they're willing to live with it because there is literally not another broadleaf weed anywhere. No crabgrass, no nothing, just lots of Poa. I'm assuming they're willing to live with that and I don't blame them because again, this is a public place and it's just beautiful. So the one thing I want to point out though is, again, it gets in the 90s here and this grass is gorgeous. The color is just beautiful on it all the way around. And so obviously it's irrigated. I haven't looked for irrigation. I need to do that, but oh wait, there we go dandelion so i did find one and by the way did you notice how compact the growth was that's because they're mowing low here and they're mowing often they're mowing really often so it keeps the dandelion growth compact but what i was getting at is it just shows that kentucky bluegrass can grow and stay green in full sun in the 90s if it's irrigated well and then the second piece of that and that's what i wanted to point out is that this is not a humid climate You'd be surprised what humidity does to cool season lawns. Again, you can see, just look at this. There is not a stitch of this 
well that's a flooded spot right there but for the rest of this there's not a stitch of this that is drought stressed nothing and that is because it's so dry here there's no humidity also no disease so it just shows you kentucky bluegrass can grow in 90 92 93 degree temperatures and look this good in a public place by the way giant lawn space when you don't have humidity so i guess what i'm trying to say there is to you guys that all live in utah you have literally the perfect growing conditions you do not feel the pain of my friends across the midwest over by illinois indiana who do get a lot of humidity maybe out to the east new jersey new york again humidity pennsylvania humidity down into the carolinas humidity of course they don't have kentucky bluegrass necessarily there but you know what i'm saying right the key to having a nice lawn even when it's super hot and not having to embrace the struggle is low humidity never forget that now not like you can move i'm not saying that i'm just trying to let you guys see like when you see pictures on instagram and some of these lawns are like gorgeous well yeah because no humidity that could be one of the the reasons not always i mean I'm not saying those people don't put in work i'm just trying to say that could be one of the reasons now another thing to point out is is look at how well this turf is doing in the shade one thing you'll notice is there is no poa annua in this shaded area at all here at all and uh this is what i would call dappled sun just because you see the sun here right now as the sun moves across the sky this dappling changes and it changes by the day and you know as these leaves move around and all that so this becomes enough sun that this Kentucky bluegrass can do well in here and again this is not dense shade this is dappled shade or dappled sun although I will say this is probably the most shade that I would think it could do well in the other thing is this is a slope so another challenge but I mean look they're doing really well with it you can see it's slightly etiolated in other words it's thinned out in a few spots but overall really beautiful the other thing i'll point out is the maintenance crew here is top notch look at the look at the edging around this tree beautiful beautiful work now here i am over here on a corner i'm gonna miss my walk light but this is good old-fashioned crabgrass in the flesh all through there all right so now i'm over here in more of like a public park area and i mean Grass still looks really good, but you know, we'll find some more ch challenges over here. One is clover, and you can see the bees are taking advantage of it. So people would ask me, what do you spray on clover? Well, when you have bees like that, the answer is nothing. Let it go. You want to kill the clover when there are no bees on it. I mean, let them have their fun. Let them make their honey. This is another really nice Kentucky bluegrass lawn that's cut really short, actually. These are like hawthorns, I think. Washington hawthorns coming down through here. And, uh, but you can see right along the edges, crabgrass. So a lot of you guys are gonna start seeing this now. And you can always tell it, it's more of this light green color, you know, compared to your KBG. And you will mostly find it along edges. You'll see it there. You can see it right here. Right there. It'll usually appear in the hot zones around corners. You can see they do a really tight edge right here. So what that can do is if there's a pre-emergent barrier here, all that edging can break down the pre-emergent barrier plus radiating heat. So that's usually why you're gonna find crabgrass right along edges at first. So, but it's very interesting how they can cut this so low. I mean, it looks great. Look at over here. I mean, it's like as low as it can go. Beautiful how they do the flowers down through here. Those are impatiens. But look at that is a really low cut. Now, if you have an issue with Poa annua, tenacity is what you want. If it's still alive, like it was in this video, tenacity, a couple applications will take it out and turn it white. But then you wanna make sure that as you're moving into the fall and as soil temperatures are falling to 70 degrees heading out of summer, 
that you get down a pre-emergent. Dithiapyr is a great choice. Prodiamine would also work. They'll work pretty much the same. It just depends if you've used up your yearly allotment of prodiamine, which many of you have. So just switch to Dithiapyr, and you don't want to do any type of seeding, obviously, in the fall, and you probably want to not aerate, mechanically aerate, either. I did a full segment on this on my podcast. I'll link to that below if you want some more details. Every cart that comes true gets branded. You know, it's a golf course. We got to take care of it. One thing I did want to show you, though, is these are some beautiful, beautiful Kentucky bluegrass tea boxes here. But what you have are these spots like this. What this is, is at some point, somebody used the bent grass seed that they use for the greens. And uh, I don't know if they were filling divots with it or what, but you can see this is the Kentucky bluegrass cut nice and short, but this is the bent grass. So I'm sure they didn't do that on purpose. There's a few spots all around here. Scotty, beam us up. <laughs> all right. We gotta go do some lawn tips. We gotta go do a couple of tips. A couple two tree lawn tips. Two tree. So, all right. So I wanna show you guys what heat stress looks like. Because uh, this grass we're gonna go look at out here was not stressed just a few hours ago, but it is now. And I'm not talking about that. That's drought stress. There, see him? Yeah, you. even the SEO guy can see him. Right over here. Go past here. You want to go 90 degree scene? angles, 90 degree angles. 90 degree angles. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. There's no bueno. A lot of goose feathers out here too. Yeah, a lot of goose. All right. So let's just go right here. You can see. So what this is, this grass is just beginning to check out. Now, I don't know if you can tell. You may not be able to see because I'm not tall enough. But they got irrigation running over there. And they have to pretty much run on the course, even though we're running a tournament here. They have to run it because you can see the grass starts to check out. So this is what you guys can see if you know, like in your in hot days, this is tells you, hey, I need to go ahead and maybe do a day cool off, like an afternoon cool off. Cause that's all this is, this is just drought stress. You guys wouldn't believe how many people send me pictures like this and they're like, so I got disease? Do I need to put down disease X? Like, no, it's just what happens because you can see other areas are nice and green. Other areas are just starting to check out. That's also though what you might, Realize are areas that need a little more attention. Maybe that's where you put your hydrotain. This and this and that. There you go, Montana locals. <laughs> People make fun of Floridians. <laughs> It's been a great trip being out here. I don't know if many of you know, but I think a lot of you don't know, Yard Mastery is my company that I started. And we have an office here in Bozeman, Montana. This is where most of our customer service comes out as well as some of our shipping and now the merch that we're running both for the Lawn Care and Yard Mastery. And it was nice to catch up and go and check out our office. So we're back over, this is our office here. Now, obviously we don't take care of the grass here. <laughs> uh, so don't judge. You know, it's all part of the lease or whatever. But kind of interesting, you can see this is irrigated. So it's somewhat green, not bad. Then you come over here, non-irrigated. And you can see it's just all droughted out. You know, a lot of people walk through here, number one, but our employees do bring their dogs to work. It's one of the things we do. And here you can see these spots here from some dog pee because see dog pee is essentially urea nitrogen and so I'm not gonna touch this <laughs> but essentially some dog pee that's not too concentrated actually can cause a flush of growth and you'll see it there and you'll see it right there that's dog pee and again we have a path right here so it may not be from our employees dogs but you can definitely see here where a dog has peed but the middle has died 
and that's because the pea was too strongly concentrated right in the middle and killed it but around the edges the urea was not too strongly concentrated and caused a flush of growth and then of course you can see another couple spots here right off our patio all these little dark spots that's from dogs peeing now speaking of dog urine that is one of the questions we get a lot hey how can i stop my dog's pee and so josh my business partner here in bozeman they have a weimer reiner he is so cute but he definitely destroys the grass so I had Josh do a little experiment this year. Let's take you through that and show you some of the things that he's learned trying to help his grass over at his place, which isn't far from here, trying to keep that dog pee from destroying his lawn at his place. And, uh, one of the biggest questions that I get is how can I stop my dog's pee from burning my lawn? And it's one of those things that, listen, if you're not gonna be on top of it, there really isn't a way to stop it. But if you're somebody that can be on top of it at least somewhat, we're gonna show you some ways that my business partner Josh has used to not only help to repair the lawn at his place, but also to prevent further damage. And that's really what most of you care about is how do I prevent the dog's pee from burning the lawn? So this is the lawn that's in the shade right now. Now he doesn't mow it. He has an association that mows it. So that's why it's got a bunch of clippings up, up there. But you can see these are pea spots that are starting to fill in. See these? So these are all ones from earlier in the spring. here these are starting to fill in these were all much worse earlier in the spring now there is no fertilizing contract or anything here like that he does put down a little bit of our fertilizer like a couple two three times a year but nothing much so the color staying good here but what he did do was when you see the concoction that we have he actually sprayed the spots that were all burned up he actually put some of it in there to help those repair okay so now let's go look at the mix that he's using and what this mix does is he puts this into a bottle and then after the dog urinates he pours this right in the spot okay so this is my business partner josh hey and he's the one that runs our bozeman office so josh all right show us your concoction that you've been mixing up well you're just in luck because i need to make more but okay. uh what i found is I just used an old Brita filter that I've reclaimed. So it's pretty much empty. Need to make some. So you got, you got my Humic 12 and RGS. Humic 12 and RGS. Okay. And for this, it's a gallon and a half. So I, at six ounces per thousand, or <laughs> six ounces per gallon, I do nine ounces yep. to uh, fill this up. So nine ounces of each. So nine ounces yep. of Humic 12. And it's got a little measure on the side there. So I just put that in there. And a little extra juju from before, you know, get that bacteria from before in there. Nice. Keep it, keep it going. Bacteria, yeah, we like, like that. Yeah, uh, like what's that bread you used to get? Like beer bread, lasts forever, and you just keep, keep it. off the it's like, and <laughs> It's like you're making kombucha. Yeah, there you go. So another nine of RGS. And then, buddy, you're gonna get to get on camera in a minute. So, just fill her up. And I just kind of stir it a little bit. A little agitation, a yeah. little agitation going on over there. And I got the mark here. I just marked out a gallon and a half. Yeah. So, and I thought where that black, you know, filter thing for the Brita kind of sits. I pulled the filter out, so it's not a yeah. filter anymore. Yeah, we want to point that out. He's not actually using the filter. It's just no, the it's tank. Just a, just a, a disp dispensing mechanism. And this, uh, for us and our single dog, lasts about a week. So I do this about each weekend. Just put it back over here. And then I actually found this like waterfall uh, attachment for the bottle. And it has a bunch of little holes, and I kind of poked it out with the nail to make them a little bigger. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really need to, but I like I like the flow a little Looks bit. like something from a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, and then you just, yeah, turn on, juice it up. So this is a filled? one liter, so this is a one liter bottle. I fill this up once a day, and this lasts about the five times a day on average we take them out, give or take. 
Okay, so this will last one full day. Yeah, one okay. full day per liter. So this tank lasts about a week. And uh, I got this. It's time to do your business. All right, let's go. Remy is a very active Weimariner. So now you take them only to one spot yeah, to go, right? To help the grass recover, we brought them over to here because there's like nothing going on. Remy? So how long has he been going over here? Months. Months. Yeah. So he's been going over here for months and you yeah, can see no damage. At least two months. At least so. two months. Okay. Hurry, hurry up. Hurry. Now we got to get him to go on cue. <laughs> He's all wound up. I'm all wound he's up. He's literally all, he's winding <laughs> you up. Here, you want me to hold you? Let me hold you. Come here, me. Let me go. Come here. Don't worry, Remy. We'll boop it out. All right, yep. so then you go to the spot that yep. he went. So I just kind of keep a good idea and then I just juice it up like this. That's, that's it. it. And then you're good. Yeah, that's it. And so. You can see I used about a fifth, a yeah. quarter of the bottle or so. And that'll last the whole day. Yeah. Try to make it easy on ourselves. Remy, thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Oh, good boy. Oh, yeah, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes walking back, if there's old dead spots or other dogs, I'll just yeah. give it a little love. Yeah. A little love as we go. So I just want to go back and just point out. So this is the area that he's been going in. So right here is where we just he just treated. You see how easy that was. But he's been going all in here. Now again, you'll see dead grass in here. That is from the mowers. That isn't from anything else. And there is no fertilization that goes on here or anything like that. But there's no dead spots is essentially what we're pointing out. Now there are some areas that are darker because when the pea is neutralized, the urea is neutralized, it does act as a fertilizer. If this lawn was being well fertilized like what you guys do, all of that color would even out because the grass is only gonna get so green. The only reason that you see it green there is because the pea, which is urea, is making it green and the rest of the grass has no fertilizer. So that's the difference. But what you are seeing is no burns as, a core, as opposed to over here where they were going before they were using this strategy. You can see there's burns everywhere. Now again, these are repairing. This must be from someone else's dog. But you can see these spots are starting to repair and it's taking a little bit of time. One other thing I do want to point out is they do have irrigation here. So you think he just poured that there, it's gonna sit? No, they have irrigation that runs here because it's so dry pretty much every day. That does need to be watered in. If it just stays on the top, it's not gonna work. But so their irrigation runs and waters that in and that way it gets in there and neutralizes that urine. If you didn't have irrigation, then you would probably want to take a hose and spray that down in there a little bit after you did that uh, wash through. It's gotta get down in there and water is very important for this process because water also helps in neutralizing the urine. Yep. Lift off. Oh yeah, we could do a 50. <laughs> yeah. One thing I do want to say, to y'all that live here, I know why you live here. This is a beautiful place. And the summer, holy cow, if this is your summer, whew, y'all need to keep this place a secret. So the last little lawn tip I wanna give you here and then I'm gonna get back over to the festivities. We're expecting another couple groups to come through is a lot of you across the country, you're coming into now some cooler temperatures. I can even feel it here. It was in the 90s when I was in Salt Lake and up here in Bozeman, it's definitely a little bit cooler here during the day. But as you're coming into these cooler temperatures, a lot of you guys are gonna get a week in advance here. A lot of you guys are gonna get a week coming up here where your temperatures are gonna be down below 85, maybe even below 80. If you do want to go ahead and bring your lawn out of summer dormancy, you can do that. What you're going to want to do is water every single day. You want to get down a half to three quarter inches of water. So you do that every single day for five, maybe even six days in a row to give that lawn the signal, hey, I got you, man. We got cooler temperatures here. I got you with the water. I want you to know I'm here to support you and bring that lawn out. Then after that five day period, you should be able to get on your deep and frequent watering from there, which would be water every two to three days, one half inch in each section and it should be able to stay there. However, the one thing you don't wanna do is bring it out of dormancy and then let it go back again because it's gonna use whatever energy it's stored up from spring to come out of dormancy and it's not gonna have a lot of energy stored up for another one of those rebirths. 
So make sure if you do decide to bring it out of dormancy that you really keep it there and you work with it and you start spoon feeding it again slowly. I've got videos that I did on that as well where I talked about starting out with micronutrients and then moving into some nitrogen fertilizer but something that's a little bit slower release. And in that video, I use store-bought products. I'll link to that below. Or of course, you can get anything that you like from my store, thelawncarenut.com or Yard Mastery where I think we have really awesome products for the same exact thing. So with that, I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a great week. Hope you've enjoyed this little video from on the road. I got much more coming. Got a really cool collab coming up here, as well as some more different types of content for all of you warm season friends. So with that, I'm Alan Hain, The Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.